This video is to show you how you can create mix effects on the TriCaster. I'm using the TriCaster 460. You create your program as normal and you start. The TriCaster will be loading as usual. And when it loads normally, what you see is just this row, the program row, one row. To access the mix effects row, you click on that bar at the top to expose it. And here you have now two banks exposed, regular program and the mix effects. Now there are four mix effects sets that you can make here. You have mix effects one, mix effects two, three, and four. In this case, you can begin to create a two layer mix effects. That means one at the bottom and something on top of it. Now, and to do that, you go in this area and you click on that plus sign. And you select the number of layers that you want. I already have two, so I need not select two, but if I was in another set and I wanted to come back to a two layer set, I would select two from there. So let's create a two layer set. What we are going to do then we have to make sure we're going to import into this set other videos, still pictures, which are graphics, or your cameras. I'm going to bring in a graphic in this case. And a graphic can be put in either the DDR layer, which is for video and graphics. Or I could put it in the graphics later. In this case, I'm just putting it in DDR. And I want it to be the bottom layer, which everything else is going to be on top. So it is on the second row in this case. And I make sure I have MixFX1 pre, um, program or preview set there but normally you put it on preview to set it up the next thing I'm going to do is to bring in my camera which is the only one camera that is showing and the camera is on top of the base layer so it is hiding the base to expose that I'm going to click right there on my positioning tool the positioning tool now allows you to zoom in or out of that picture. So I'm going to zoom in to make it smaller or zoom out, whatever it is, to make the picture smaller. And as you can see, the picture here is getting is smaller and I'm trying to position it over that white space that I had on the background. So I zoom and position and notice I had to put a check mark in position on the tab so I could use the effects below. So it's nicely fitted there now. The next thing I'm going to do is to give it some more effects. So I click on the effects tab there and I'm going to put and click it on the edges there and I want to feather around them to make it like a distinctive uh, set apart from the background. So I did that. I could also uncheck the edges and give it a border and click that plus to bring in a border. And here you see I could choose from that but there is a plethora of borders I could choose from from
letras. And frames. And backgrounds. That was for the Helix set. I could use it for my own design. And this is what it would look like if I chose a, border, a small border. When I'm done the design, I can put it on program and take it like I would any regular program. It doesn't affect what is in the camera on the program roll. The camera will show as normal. And there it is. Now in this set, there are some pre-designed sets that are found on the Helix on the helix set that you access by again clicking the border clicking the plus sign where where you would go to select the two layer or other layers the helix set here in this case i chose that one it's a two layer set and i have put that on i i'm mean, now using mix effect to a different mix effect. Now in it, I'm going to put into the small box there, camera that I have, which is camera four. And I'm going to import a background in there. It could be a video, it could be a DDR, it could be anything. But in this case, I'm choosing a graphic. I've put the graphic in, which is a background layer. And it doesn't really, in, in the B layer, in this case, not really background. And I could project it, but by taking it there and mix effects too. But if you notice, the graphic is not filling the complete screen. So again, I can go into the positioning tool area for that layer, for that line, and expand it. And there it is. There's something I didn't um, mention, and that was the there are two banks above the program. There's bank one and bank two, and bank two will expose all the the features in the buffer. There are 15 buffers, and so to access that, once you expose that, you can click on click on whatever buffer you want and select it scroll up in there look for animated buffers there are two different times with this one i'm just sticking to one animated buffers and from that you select whichever one you have seen you see there and that's basically it